That will go as a base hit with a runner in scoring position with Nick Marcakis. But no RBI. Oh, curveball and strike three. Aubrey Huff, he's tossed the bat, he's tossed the helmet, and he better be careful he doesn't get tossed. Well, the 2 0 pitch, he didn't like that one, and he doesn't like strike three either. Dave Tremblay is chin to chin with crew chief Jerry Lane because he was ejected from the ball game shortly after we went to commercial. Home plate umpire Chris Tiller, who's in his first year as a member of the crew in the major leagues, had called out Aubrey Huff on a called third strike. Obviously, Tremblay didn't like the call. He starts drawing at Tiller, and Tiller does this. Well, he kind of goes up. Oh, well, I'm going to throw. It. Well, go ahead and throw him out. So he throws him out, and Tremblay's saying, "Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's throwing me out here? Which one of you guys are throwing me out?" And then Tremblay decided to hold court with both of them. That was great. Tiller sort of looked to Lane and said, "Do you mind if I chuck him?" It's very unpredictable. You can't follow him. Both he and Veritek have been a tough match tonight. Two-two. Strike three, Jeter down lucky. He does not like that call. Gonna look at Veritek setting up inside, and you see a great frame job by Veritek. Almost caught the ball in the heel of his glove and held that glove right there. Now Girardi just got thrown out. He came in to support Jeter, and Jerry Meals threw him out. Now Girardi's gonna get his money's worth. Jordy's also trying to spark his club a little bit. They seem a little flat, and they've seemed flat against the Red Sox all year. Well, one thing you can't argue is balls and strikes. That's automatic ejection. And, uh, you know, once he came out of the dugout, he's going to be turning around going the other way pretty soon. Well, that's a great job by the manager to protect your shortstop. Get out there before he gets run. Better that the manager gets thrown out than your yeah. shortstop. But that, a little bit of that has to do with Hughes, too. I think Girardi felt like Phil Hughes got squeezed early in the game a little bit. Of course, John Lester has been around the plate all night long. And when you are, and you do work both sides of the plate, you're going to get the benefit of some calls. But I thought Veritek did a great job of framing this pitch as well. Oh, nice. You see how to receive the ball and kind of watch him bring it kind of right back in the zone. Turn his glove back over and get the call. See him hold his glove right there and almost catch it in the heel of his glove. Down looking. Simonstein doesn't seem to be uh, fatiguing at all. He is retired the last four in a row. And now Nick Swisher is thrown out by the home plate umpire, James Hoy. Joe Girardi will come out and try to say. Well, Joe Girardi had an animated discussion with the home plate umpire, James Hoy, about this pitch. This was strike three to Nick Swisher. Swisher didn't like it, said something to Hoy, and Hoy immediately threw him out. Let's see if he was right. Well, yeah. We've seen him call worse strikes today, so he's had a wide strike zone. He, he's definitely had a wide zone. And uh, uh, if I heard Hoy right, in between innings when he was talking to Joe Girardi, he said he can't say that. Go, oh, and Spire hit him at the pitch. Barajas tosses the bat away and doesn't look that way, but Bill Hahn is warning Justin Spire. Sosha comes out. The home plate umpire, Bill Hahn, had his suspicions after the home run. And then the hit batter. Well, Justin tried to say it like Sosha, same thing. He's trying to say that's a fork ball. Now a warning to the Blue Jays also not to retaliate. And that's a situation. The pitcher, if you if you were going to throw it at a batter, you're certainly not going to throw a fork ball. Came in at 77 miles an hour. And also, in that situation, the umpires are trying to make sure something would escalate after so many swings, and the Jays have had very healthy swings putting up 13 against you. But that's the spot where he did throw at him. Two guys from Pennsylvania right there Bill Hahn, the umpire, and Mike Sosha, the Angels manager, and Hahn's just thrown Sosha out of the game. 
So it has been an entirely forgettable night for the Angels. Mike Slice has protected his player named Justin Spire. He said, you know, many times you're going to get a warning on a fork ball. Setting up on the outside part of the plate. You can see the downward action is done underneath the pitch. Barajas had no reaction whatsoever. But as soon as Han warned Spire, Justin was upset. And that brought Sosha out. In the air to left field, Reggie Willits. And the Blue Jays are out. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Wow. Spire is not ready to leave the field yet. And Ron Renneke comes out. Utley now 0 for 6 in this series. And he bounces one slowly. Can he turn two? Castillo gets the out at first. And now they have Victorino in the rundown. And finally, the tag is placed on for the double play. Wait a second. Did we have an obstruction call? Watch this. Victorino comes back and runs into Delgado. Oh, Reyes, I'm sorry. See, he runs back into Reyes. So, Guys. obstruction call against Reyes, which allows Victorino to reach second base safely, and Jerry Manuel out Gary? to argue. Joy Keith. Gary, uh, my angle right here, I had the perfect angle where I'm at. It looked to me as if Victorino went out of his way, stepped to his right to get Reyes in trouble. I, I thought it was a bad call. I agree. Watching that on replay right now, you're absolutely right. He, he initiated the contact, Victorino. And Mr. Walke and Mr. Manuel are not agreeing on anything tonight. Uh, Reyes rightly perturbed at that because that'll be an error charge to Reyes for the obstruction. You know, the, the, and Jerry's making the right call, is that if you make contact of uh, uh, Victorino with, with Reyes, as you see Jerry going at it. And he has been ejected. And now he's going to get his money's worth, and he might have just uh, headbutted Bill Welke, and that's not going to help Jerry's cause. That's three plays tonight that Jerry has objected to. The first one was the double play the Mets appeared to turn where he didn't get the call. That was a, a definitely a bad call. Then the one earlier in this inning on the foul tip, and now this. Listen, if it's in normal play or the normal course of events, then of course there could be obstruction. But what happens with Victorino is once he turns around, he seeks out Reyes. And you cannot do that because if you could do that, everyone would do that anytime they got in a rundown. Even gave Reyes a little forearm shiver there. Yeah, that was clearly initiated by Victorino. If Carlson's ready, we may see him. Strike three called. Oh, Matt Holiday, look at him. He is on fire. Bob Guerin takes his place, and now Guerin is tossed immediately. And his first at bat this afternoon, Holiday got rung up on a ball that he thought was just off the plate outside. This pitch was pretty much the same location. He did complain about it in his first at bat. This time he was much more animated. He definitely felt the ball was outside. That's the second time today he's gotten rung up on a pitch in the same spot that he felt was off the plate. And again, Bob Guerin did a fine job to get out here and keep Holiday in the ball game. He was clipping along at a very rapid rate. Struck yeah. him out looking to end the inning. He flips the bat in disgust. He's got words for Mike DeMuro. 
But the inning is over. Lee gets out of it. White Sox leave him loaded. It remains 4-0 Cleveland. Dye's been ejected from the game as we go to the bottom of the sixth. After Jermaine Dye struck out to end the inning, he had words for Mike DeMuro, and it looked like it was over. Well, he walked away. Watch him throw the helmet, though. The helmet goes back towards him, and, that and was that's it. automatic ejection. Ozzie came out briefly, but then turned and walked away. So Dye is out of the ball game. Lance, or Jay, excuse me, Jason Nix has gone from second base out the right field, and Chris Getz has come into the game now at second base for Chicago. And now DeMuro is still hearing it from the White Sox dugout. And he's yelling back now at Ozzie Guillen, and Ozzie may not be long for this game. And he's gone. He has been ejected now by Mike DeMuro, and all he can do is laugh. Well, now you might as well come out and have your say. Brzezinski's going to go to the mound. Burley's going uh, <laughs> to... He's going to say, all I, all I was telling you... He's... He called her to strike, so I'm not sure if Oz, what's Ozzy, what he's saying. I mean, he's, it's a strike to Peralta, so he wasn't arguing that. I, that's a good Obviously, point. Obviously, he's still chirping about what happened to Jermaine Dye. You notice how the other umpire's got to come in and, and get his say. He's got nothing to say. But what I don't understand, Rick, is if Ozzy wanted to get run, why didn't he just get run when Dye got thrown out? Because he turned and walked away, so he didn't get thrown out of the game. Now he's pointing over toward the Indians' dugout. I don't know. I, I'm at a loss. He's pointing over, I think, at Peralta. Just about the, the strike zone and the way he was calling it, but... Again, he called the pitch to Peralta a strike. It's curveball, slow curveball. It's right there. I don't know. Unless, I, no, I didn't see. Maybe he was reacting to the fact that, did Johnny say something to the umpire? And is he saying, why didn't you throw him out? I, why else would he be gesturing over toward Peralta? I have no idea. In any event, he's been gone. He's been tossed from the game along with Jermaine Die. All right, there's the pitch that ends the inning to Jermaine Die. Inside a good corner. Pitch. Well, he thinks it's inside. Okay, he has his say. He was ejected more so for flipping that helmet, not for saying anything. <laughs> he's not going quietly. It's the first ejection of the year for the White Sox, and they lose two. Die and Ozzie Last night it was Guerrero and Nathan and Maharas who were effective. And Ordonez is called out on strikes. And Ordonez and Schreiber exchange. Now Schreiber puts oh. his left hand on the back of Ordonez. And that's what's got Jim Leland upset. Now I don't blame him. You don't want players touching you, then you should not be touching players. Leland has been tossed, and he has a very good argument. That's a curveball away, and Ordonez doesn't believe it, but watch Schreiber right here. Well, get out of the box. Well, and the reason, uh, you know, interesting that he wants to Adonis, speed. The... He's basically saying, what are you doing? What are you doing? You can't do that. As if to say, let's speed things up here. And the reason we're here in the seventh inning, two and a half hours into this game, is because we haven't had many strikes called tonight, in my opinion. Here's Larish. Well, Joe West, the crew chief. Toward the Tiger dugout, looking in as Jim Leland's going to take his time to leave the dugout. 
Well, that wasn't called for. Speaking of uh, Schreiber's. That almost hit him. It did hit him. Or did it? No, Kadir trying to buy it, but. Or sell it, rather. Paul Nard is not buying it. And here comes Ron Gardenhire. That ball didn't come close. Not even close. Well, Leland was ejected last night, and Gartenheyer gets the Evo today. He's been thrown out of the game. Boston with runners in scoring position today, three for 18. They just threw Frank Kahn out of the game. Bill Miller has been ringing up the Red Sox with great regularity today. And I think Tito, whether the pitches were strikes or not, had just gotten tired of it. He's going to get his money's worth. You can't argue a ball on a strike call. Anyhow, it's an automatic ejection. So he's getting his money's worth right now, Francona is. That wasn't a called third strike either. That was a 3-0 strike that finally got him tossed. Francona has his say, and he'll go back to the clubhouse now. We mentioned, Gooby, that Miller's been giving that low strike all day long. There was a high strike. Well, it definitely got the plate. It's whether it was above the belt or not. It was in question. Terry Francona had had enough. And the pitch. Strike three. Damon down looking again, and he doesn't like it. And he's going to tell Wally Bell as much. Uh oh, don't touch that. That's gone. And he's yeah. thrown out. I've been through that one. Uh, I can't blame Johnny right there. You know, I think the first at bat, we all yeah. saw that ball was way off the plate on the outside, and now he rings them up one way inside. So uh, that, that is pretty frustrating, especially with men on base in a clutch situation. That from the overhead of show. I mean, the, the first pitch was in the other batter's box, but anytime as a player you show them where that ball is, see, he's, he's, he's been on the outside batter's box and the inside. That's a, that's a large plate. And you can see he's saying that's twice because he didn't like the call in the first either. Yeah, Joe Girardi didn't have time to get out there. You can see he's trying to get there and save him, but it's just too late. Johnny's gone. It hit him and he pulled the bat back. And so Ugla is on his way down to first. Joe Torrey is going to come out. If Ugla bunts at the ball and it hits him, it's a strike. And I, I thought it was just interesting, number one, that Dan Ugla was up there trying to sacrifice. He was. Oh, wait a minute. They're going to overrule this. The first base umpire, Ed Rapuano, has said, and he didn't bunt at the ball, he was pulling back. Ed no, Eddie, he was not. Eddie Rapuano is a good umpire, but I think he missed that call. He said, Freddie saying it hit him, but Ed said, no, he bunted at the ball, but no, he didn't bunt at the ball. He clearly pulled the bat back as it caught him on the arm. And now Joe West joins the, the discussion. And, and Joe's just going to say, hey, look, Ed Rap one on the first base up has a better view and angle than I do. It's up to him. You can see by what he's saying is that Dan Ugla well, punted at the ball, but he didn't. I think what one of the things that may probably have upset Freddie the most is Joe West did not ask for the appeal until Joe Torrey came out and asked him to ask for the appeal. Normally that's done within a second or two on a check swing or a play like that. And it's the catcher that asks. It's a little intimidation on Joe Torrey's part to Joe West. Here's another look. He's there. He brings the bat back. 
He never bunted at the ball. Comes back. He comes back. And it hits him. And so Tory comes out. Did, well, they, did they throw Freddie out of the game? Because uh, Joe West right now is writing something down. And it looks like he has been ejected. So Freddie on his way out. Carlos Tosca now in charge. Certainly Freddie will be in close contact. Here's the one two. Change up, got him. Oga snaps his back. And he has a right to be upset. And he has a right to be upset at Rapuana. Uncle's yelling at Rapuana right now. Danny better be careful. Yeah, he don't want to get thrown out now either. He can be upset, but you can't get thrown out here. He bent one. Loney makes a great play. The flip out at first. Bonifacio throws his helmet. And there's one out. Hey, it's been a rough night for Ed Rapuano down there at first base. I'm not saying he missed that call. It's just been a tough night. He's had some close plays. Well, I'll say it. And he missed it. He missed that call. He's missed two calls tonight. Watch Broxton's foot as he kind of shuffles. His foot's the big one. Wow, it's, it's bang, bang. They're, the training staff is out to look at Broxton right now. Good work by the truck. Uh, he beat him. He beat him. Now, we had to slow it down two or three times, but the fact of the matter is he beat him. So two calls that don't go the Marlins' way. That two outings, one against the Twins and one against the Orioles were difficult outings. Base hit into center. DeRose is headed to the plate. Throw will come through, and he is out at the plate. Navarro denied him the plate. La Rosa puts up an argument with Greg Gibson, and here comes Eric Wedge out to argue the call. DeRosa trying to score, and Upton throws him out at the plate with some help from DeHonor Navarro. Take a look. First of all, B.J. Upton throwing a strike. I mean, a line drive, one hopper, a nice block by Navarro. That's how you block the plate. That left leg going right into the runner right there. Staying right there. That's a good job by Navarro. Stayed right there and then at the last instant. Now, the only thing he could have done a little more is get the knee down so the leg couldn't even get through his legs. But nonetheless, he stayed right there and did a good job. Well, Eric Wedge has been ejected. Upton made a great throw and Navarro a great job. And you can see on the uh, replay that DeRosa did not get to the plate because Navarro blocked it off. And now Wedge has been ejected. So it's still a five to nothing game. In the game and I felt then struck out three in a row to keep him from scoring the go ahead run and that that hit him. The Mets are going to complain that he swung and that is the ruling. The first base umpire Hunter Wendelstead said yeah you swung. So he will not be allowed to go to first. Bruce Bochy is going to come out and argue this call. And he's been thrown out of the game. He can't argue the judgment call of the umpire. Uh, if he swings and it hits him, he's out. The question is, did he swing? No, he did not. And the plate umpire ruled that he did not, but Hunter Wendelstadt overruled him, and now has thrown Bruce Bochy out of the game. Besides, switch hitters were there at the top of their batting order. When Reyes is in there, strike three call. Or maybe he said he swung. Molina coming up, then wind. Rowan. 
Jerry Manuel, the manager of the Mets, was ejected from the game as Carlos Beltran was arguing with that man that played up by Doug Eddings, and then Eddings told Jerry Manuel, oh, go, go back in the dugout, and then he tossed him. So both managers have been run. And a big rooting section for him here at this ballpark. He pitches behind Kinsler. Well, you said welcome back. Kinsler's I was going to say, how about that command? Kinsler's like, you got to be kidding me. And then Kinsler is hit, and well, hello, John Lackey, two pitches in to his return, is thrown out of the game. I'm stunned. Yes, there's a history of bad blood between these teams. I get it. But I know Ian Kinsler just got thrown behind by Bobby Jenks not too long ago. But the Angels have been waiting for six weeks for John Lackey to get on the mound. Two pitches into his return, he's done. And so she's giving Bob Davidson an ear for. But he, he threw it. I mean, he must have thought both of them were intentional. And the umpire has the right in his mind. If he thought the pitches were intentional, he can throw them out of the game without a warning. And he did exactly that. So John Lackey, after two pitches, is gone. So much for the big rooting section hanging out watching their guy today. The Abilene, Texas native who always loves pitching here throws two behind Kinsler and Bob Davidson says that's it. Now Tim Sheeta, the, the crew chief, is getting near full from Mike Sosha. Well, the Angels went deep into extra innings just the other day. Their bullpen is frayed at this point, and now they're going to have to get nine innings out of their bullpen today. Out to third behind the bag, Sandoval. Did he keep his foot on? No! That's going to bring Bruce Bochy out. The foot came off, but did he get it back in time, I think, is the question. And what Bruce Bochy is going to argue, the throw was up the line, and Ishikawa came off. But I thought at first glance it looked like he got back in time. Let's take another look. Plenty of time to make the throw. Oh, yeah. Uh, Did you see the see from that angle? Did, is he actually on the base? Is yeah. what you're saying right there? You I see, think he is. You see the base? Oh uh, yeah, you know what you see? You see yeah. the crease of the bag. You're right. right. Good call. Yeah, he got back. Oh yeah, he's gonna get tossed. Bruce Bochy and Gary Cedars from the first base umpire. See you later. Coach said his piece. Good run. But he had every reason to be upset here. Okay, balls in the glove, and then yeah, you can see that the, the crease of the see on the bag. When his foot touches the back, the, the back kind of creases up a little bit before Eckstein's foot right there. Before X foot hits the bag. Very close play. Very, very close play. And when a player goes to get the baseball and then has to go back, the umpire looks at that and it's like, okay, you know, that's the way I saw it. Ripped into left field. Here's Burpin around third coming home. Ryan Braun's throw to the plate. 
And the tag is in time, and Berkman cannot believe the out call by Delphine Cologne. And he's been thrown out of the game by Cologne, and here's Cecil Cooper. Berkman was absolutely certain he scored on that hit by Pence, and instead it's out number three of the inning. And the score remains three to one, and now Cooper's been tossed by Cologne. Tempers are heated at home plate. Now let's take a look at it. Braun comes up with a big, strong throw. The question is to Jason Kendall was he able to keep Lance off the home plate with that leg? See how Jason throws that left leg out there to block Kirkman off of home plate. Well, it's, boy, that's a tough call. You just can't tell whether the hand got that corner of home plate right there or not. Looked like his hand touched the plate from that angle, but we'll see it again as we come back with a score of three to one after five. Houston. Hitters, everything just seems to work well for him. Bloomquist strikes out for the third time today. This time, taking a call third strike. He and Paul Emmel at odds. And now Emmel is hearing it from Trey Hillman. And now Trey has been tossed from the game. But the call is safe at the plate. Safe at the plate is the call. They were saying the catcher Hundley was off the bag. Or I should say home plate. Oh. He has been tossed. Hundley got run. Black is getting his money work as well. He might not last long in this game either. He's gone. Good old brouhaha, Senator. Good old baseball brouhaha. I love that. I love that. It's been a part of baseball forever, and it never gets old. Just a just a good old dust up between an umpire and a catcher. Manager comes out. Everybody's getting thumped. Yeah, <laughs> Senator, you like it as much as I do. 
That's the crew chief, Mike Riley, coming in to break things up. Well, the, the, the call was safe at the plate. And, and Eric Cooper maintained that Nick Huntley came off came off the back. It's a super play by Gonzalez. Let's see if you can see right there, immediate on the call. Wow. I'll agree to disagree with the with the call there. I don't know. <laughs> It just shows you that it's early. Keep playing hard and see what happens. Pitches. A swing by Suzuki. Oh, Bob Guerin no. is immediately out of the dugout. He said he swung at it? He said he swung at it. Now the the runner Kennedy is safe at second, I believe. Or is he? He's walking off. Interference? Oh, if you know what? Back, it's gotta be yeah, interference. I think you're right. Ray, I think he did call interference. But if it's interference and it's a, then Kennedy is out at second. If it's batter's interference, well, Suzuki's leaving. If he went across the plate and Jojima made contact with him, then it's a double play. Then it should be, you're right. Yeah. So it's a strikeout and the interference Clark's eliminates the runner. Kennedy's not sure what's going on. He's just kind of standing in between first and second. He said that was a swing and. He followed, went to going to first base, and that's where he called interference. That's not a swing. You ought to be kidding me, and there's no contact. So, really, when you look at the replay, it certainly does not look like a swing, and it but, doesn't look like interference. Well, either. there's definitely no contact. If we can look at the replay again, you definitely see no contact. And Suzuki is trying to avoid being hit by the ball. Right in the third position. Well, Kennedy is at second. And they just threw out Garrett. Bob Garrett got thrown out. And now Dana Demuth, who's the crew chief, is coming down to try to restore some order. Well, when Knight, after the swing, Knight pointed to Suzuki, which would indicate. Interference, but yet Kennedy's still in second. So if they're saying he swung, well, unless he was, some umpires will point at, at the swing. batter, and yeah. that's their way of saying the batter went around. Now we don't and, know. And you know that is a horrible. We've talked about it often. And even Bob Watson said there's no way a home plate umpire should ever call a check swing. He can't watch the ball and watch the swing at the same time. It's a different view, a different perspective from behind. Yeah. Then first or third, depending on a right-handed or left-handed batter, you cannot see it. Well, it is. He called it himself. He called it a swing. So it's a strikeout at a stolen base. Yeah. There is no interference yeah. anywhere. I, I thought he had pointed interference, and as Suzuki was going to first, he did avoid contact by Jojima. The scanning got tossed too. Well, maybe let's see if Bob Guerin got tossed. Did they both yeah, get I, it? And Bob is going into the dugout. Uh, we'll see what he does. Well, he's got reason to be upset. Oh, I mean, yeah. That was a bad call. It should be first and second and nobody out. Well, I just wonder if Jim got, uh, Jim Scalin got tossed and Bob went out to protect him. Uh, it looks and, like and Bob did not get ejected. Yeah. So Hayes lose their hitting coach, but not their manager. Well, well, and Bob, I, I, I wonder if uh, Ted and Larry have been tossed from the bench. Well, we'll, we'll see as the uh, as the inning progresses here. Uh, I know for a fact that starting pitchers on days they don't pitch, a lot of times they like to watch the game in the video room just to see what the opposing hitters are swinging at, what are they hitting, what are they not hitting. And certainly if you've been watching this game up in the video room, you've seen the number of pitches that Bob Davidson has missed in this game. And. Uh, perhaps Ted Lilly and or Larry Rothschild just uh, thought it was time to point it out to Bob Davidson what a horrible job he's doing tonight. Take on McClough. Knocked down and Morgan's going to try to score. Might be a play. Safe. Oh. He just got in. I thought he got him. And Lou's got to come out to keep his pitcher in the ball game. Well, oh, he bumped him. Uh, you no. can't do that, Carlos. Come on, Carlos. You got to be careful. 
He bumped him and that might be a suspension for Zambrano. Lou has got I'll tell you Larry's coming out they got to get Carlos off the field. And he just throws the ball up into the bleachers. He didn't quite get there but he is livid. I thought he had an argument. And he is now out of the game and it's a 2 2 tie. It's a nice play by Giovanni Soto to get on that wild pitch quickly. He blocked it. It kicked over to the third base side. Tossed to Zambrano. Man, I don't know if he got that hand in there or not. Carlos, in effect, blocked home plate away from Niger Morgan. Get another look at it here. Yeah, you know, he might have gotten a left hand in. Really, really close. I mean, Mark Carlson had a great look at it, was right there on top of the play, could clearly see Morgan sliding in on his belly and Zambrano trying to block the plate. That slight bump there with the right arm got him ejected. It was not much of a bump. Threw the ball out to the warning track. That's going to cost him a little more dough. Threw his glove against the fence over in front of the dugout. That's going to probably cost him a little more dough as well. Well, we'll be back. Angel Guzman is on. It's 2 2. Poke to right. Kubel there for the catch. Here comes the runner. Here comes the throw. Safe! And Redman is furious. He's tossed. It looks like he put the tag on the hand before the hand reached the plate. By the home plate umpire, very quick fuse right there by throwing Mike Redman out of the ball game. And a longer fuse, but the same conclusion here with the manager coming out. I can't believe Ron Gardenhire is going to stay in the game. Yeah, he's gone too. A great throw from Jason Kubel. And at first look up here, it looked like Redman got the hand before the hand reached the plate. Well, let's take a look at the throw. It's a solid throw right here. Redmond catches it, and then right there, getting look like the elbow of Bailey right there before he can touch the corner of the plate. If he touched the corner, maybe this angle will show us whether he even touched the plate. Right there. He got part of the plate, but it looked like Redmond was able to just touch him before that hand dropped on the plate. Well, a costly call and a costly ejection because now the Twins have lost the designated hitter for the balance of the game. And I'm sure Ron Gardenhire not too fond of the call and then the quick ejection because now the Twins are in a real bind. One and two to Brendan Harris. And Beckett with a profanity laced and now Veritex, sentence. Yeah, Veritex protecting his pitcher right here. Well, but Beckett, we could hear it now. Veritek has been tossed, and Francona will soon follow, I would suspect. Kishner has had a very unsettling seventh inning. Yeah, he's gone too. Four ejections, and <laughs> now Tishner almost pointing to his feet. And an imaginary line saying, okay, cross over here. I think Terry Francona saying, you know what, both both sides have been unhappy with your strike zone here this afternoon. And some of your calls. Oh, I'm sorry, the breaking ball to Harris looked like it was a strike. And that pitch. And Francona's getting his money's worth. But now both catchers have been thrown out of the game. The difference, of course, in the Boston side, they have Kataris on the bench. The Twins did not have Maurer on the bench. Well, Beckett's the one, I think, that started this right here. I mean, it's a pretty good pitch to Harris. 
Uh, that had plenty of the plate. And you can see Beth Beckett's reaction. And now Veritek is going to stand in for his pitcher and take all the abuse. And whatever he says right here, you see Veritek. I don't know if Veritek says anything right there. He holds it for a split second. Well, I could hear somebody. I thought it was Beckett uh, utter a profanity. And then Veritek trying, as you said, to protect his yep. pitcher. But of course, you can't argue balls and strikes. And that's what Veritek is doing. And Francona just couldn't get there in time to keep his catcher in the game. 